Hi, everybody. How y'all doing? We are Stethoscope Diaries. I'm Dr. Franklin. And I am Dr. Coase. And we are here to talk about a very important topic that I get conversation about in my clinic every day. And that is PCOS. That's right. Yep. Polycystic ovarian syndrome. Because it's PCOS Awareness Month. Sis. It is. Yes. It is. So that's why it's so important that mm -hmm. we talk about this. This is a piece of conversation. We have all day, every day, multiple patients mm -hmm. coming in with many problems, yes. many presentations. Of course. And not every woman looks the same. And I think that is really important. I, I, I don't know about you, but when most women come to my office, they're like, well, my my sister had this or my friend had this, my cousin had this. And I say, not all women with polycystic ovarian syndrome will present in the same way. They do not look the same just because you have this one thing that may be associated with the syndrome does not mean that fits you. That's right. Yes. <laughs> I know. Everyone looks so different. Mm -hmm. And there are so many different symptoms, so yes. many different signs. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about a few things that you need to know about Absolutely. PCOS. I think that's a good way, place to start, right? Absolutely. Three things you need to know about PCOS. And let's get into it. Is this what you want now? Feels like you're looking for something better. Uh-huh. So you mentioned signs and symptoms. What are some signs and symptoms right. that you tell patients about or that you're alert of when you are seeing a patient? Right. So number one, signs and symptoms to look for. People come into my office, they have irregular periods. And I know mm -hmm. we're going to get into that a little bit more. Um, irregular periods, they may have some issues like hair growth mm -hmm. in certain areas that they are not happy about. Yes. I'm sure you get some of that. Yes. Um, not only hair growth, um, but also male pattern baldness is Absolutely. a big one. So women may complain of hair growth on the face, chest, or even upper abdomen. Mm -hmm. That is some common places that I hear about hair growth. Absolutely. Yeah. The other thing that I see is um, androgens. Um, circulating in the system mm -hmm. are a real problem. So when you have androgens circulating in the system, it actually makes your skin very oily mm -hmm. and it can make you break out. It can give you acne. So even mm -hmm. women in their uh, 30s and 40s, they're like, I've gone through puberty. Why right. do I have acne? Hey guys, if you like what you're hearing and you like what you're seeing, hit that subscribe, hit that like so we can bring you more content. Now let's get back to this episode. Yes, it's... You mentioned the androgen levels or the elevated testosterone, and that elevated testosterone can affect ovulation, which is releasing an egg every month. Mm -hmm. So another sign of symptom that patients can present with is abnormal ultrasound findings, such as ovaries that are a little bit larger with multiple baby cysts or follicles in their ovaries, and that can be something seen on ultrasound, or they can present with problems with getting pregnant right so. right which uh -huh. is our number, number two, two. <laughs> things to know about pcos mm -hmm. dr coates yes can people get pregnant if they have pcos i hope can you zoom in uh -uh. you can get <laughs> pregnant if you have pcos providers stop telling your patients that that is not true you can get pregnant that is Absolutely. so true. <laughs> now, we know if you look online and you look up PCOS, they commonly pair it with infertility. Yes, they do. So mm -hmm. we know that there are some issues with fertility. That does, mean, does not mean you cannot get pregnant. Mm -hmm. And this is so important because when people are told this, they are going to have infertility. It's mm -hmm. almost like a stab in the heart yes. for people. Like, mm -hmm. I will never have a baby. Mm -hmm. But you know... With PCOS, you just ovulate irregularly. Correct. You do ovulate some time, so you mm -hmm. might catch that time, but it's not predictable. And so your fertility may not be as high as your counterparts. I agree. I think another thing to add is, again, not all women look the same. So just because one patient or person you know with PCOS had issues with getting pregnancy, that pregnant, that does not mean that's going to be your story. That is okay? so true. All right. What can people do to get pregnant? One of the first things your doctors talk to you about is weight loss, which is something that you should ask them about regimens that they can offer, whether that's medication, 
diets that they may um, be able to explain to you to be on, such as low carb diets, as well as increasing physical activity. So weight loss is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And then also ovulation induction medications. So that is a medicine that your OBGYN physician can prescribe you. So ask them about it at your appointment if you're trying to get pregnant. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Now that goes to our number three. That's right. Thing you need to know about PCOS is it can cause long term consequences or problems to your health. What are some big major health consequences that women with PCOS have to look out for? So important. So when we talk about PCOS, people can be borderline diabetic. Correct. They can develop insulin resistance, which can develop into full blown out diabetes. Mm -hmm. So this is impactful for your whole life mm -hmm. because there are so many consequences with the disease of diabetes, like kidney impact, heart impact, um, all kinds of things. Yeah. Another important one is protecting your uterus. So your uterine lining can become thickened as well as irregular, and that can lead to increased risk for a uterine cancer or precancer in your uterus. So it is important to make sure you talk to your OBGYN about your menstrual cycles. The other thing that you might see is cardiovascular disease. So people are going to be at risk of high blood pressure, coronary artery disease, heart attacks, stroke, and also they can be at risk of things like hyperlipidemia, like their cholesterol might be high. And one that a lot of people don't always associate with PCOS, but women with PCOS can have higher risk of depression or a mood disorder because things such as the health conditions that they have and the irregular hormonal levels can affect mood disorders. So that is why you should be seeing either a primary care physician or an OBGYN to help manage your PCOS disorder. One of the most common things that um, I think that we can end on to mm -hmm. is that when people have PCOS, they may have some issues with weight loss yes. and issues with weight gain. And so all these conditions that we're talking about can tr be traced back. Yes. to PCOS can be traced back to weight issues. Yep. So there's so many things that you have to be aware of within your own body. You're going to need to know what to ask your doctor, what to tell your doctor mm -hmm. to see if you can get a diagnosis. Yep. I agree. I, I always tell my patients in my exam room, you are going to look different from the other woman next to you that have PCOS. The same thing that worked for her may not work for you. That's right. And so be ready to change things up. Be patient and mm -hmm. continue to do the work because it's not just a one size fits all approach. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. So I'm so glad that we had a chance yes. to talk about PCOS during PCOS Awareness, Awareness Month. Month. Hello. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.